All right, Native Instruments Drummer Series for Contact. Now I'm saying drummer series instead of something like Abbey Road Modern Drummer, Studio Drummer, 70s Drummer, because all of these interfaces are going to be the same. We're going to focus on the Abbey Road Modern Drummer, but once you know Modern Drummer, you're going to know Studio Drummer, 60s Drummer, 70s Drummer, so on and so forth, okay? So there's no reason to go through all of these. Now, of course, each of these have different instruments, different drums, different grooves, different sounds, obviously, right? So studio drummer, garage kit, session kit, stadium kit, drums from the 60s here, from the 70s here, right? But once you know one interface, you'll immediately know how to operate all of these here. Okay, so right now we have contact loaded in Pro Tools. We could, of course, have contact loaded in standalone or in any other DAW that we want. We are using the Abbey Road Modern Drummer, the white kit, the full version. We also have a light version available, but we're not focusing necessarily on the sounds. We're focusing on the interface. So let's start up here at the top. Let's click our camera icon. We, of course, have snapshots in here. And once you come through all of these tabs, which will have different sections on each of these here, and you set up things to sound exactly the way you want, you can always come up here and save your own snapshot and recall that really quickly up in here. And then here we have our mixer preset menu. Down arrow, we can choose our mixer presets. If I click my mixer tab, and I just step through these, for example, you can see how this is changing our effects and our mixer there. All right, back to the kit tab. Over here, we have our active groove. We can see the groove name right here. Hit play, hear that groove. And we can use our arrows here to hear the different mixer presets. Okay. Over here in our active groove, we can step through our grooves and we can come down to the groove page and see that down here, stepping through the grooves. We'll have a different section for the uh, groove page coming up here pretty soon, but that's what that does, okay? Step through there. Now right here, you see this little icon. This lets us drag out our MIDI from our groove. So I pull this over here, this current groove that we have focused, I just drag it out into Pro Tools in this case, and there's that groove, select it, I can play back. It's playing that groove, of course, cycle our grooves here, pull out a completely different groove. And this is how you could build up your track using your drummer series plugins, okay? if you want to use the pre-programmed grooves because there isn't a sequencer uh, within our drummer series, okay? Now also keep in mind, our grooves will be affected by our settings here, okay? And our MIDI mapping, which we'll get to uh, pretty soon. Back to the kit page. Now, before we go any further, let's head over here to options. Kit view, trigger on mouse click, because right now, if I select the drum, it just selects that drum. It doesn't actually trigger the sound. If I want to hear the sound, turn that on right there. So now I select a drum. You can actually hear it. Also, let's turn on show trigger states. Turn this on. So now whenever I click a drum or of course hit it down here with our keyboard, we'll actually see that being triggered. Okay, now back up here, select by MIDI. So if I play a note on my keyboard, my physical keyboard, I can see it triggered, but it's not selected. If I have that on, I hit my kick, it focuses my kick right down here, snare. All right, so if you wanna use your keyboard or even these keys down here, to focus your drum that you have down here. You can always have a drop down here as well, so maybe the tom, so on and so forth. You can select those by MIDI right there. So then we have the kit. We've already seen basically everything you need to know about that. Select your drum, it's in focus down here. Okay, so once we have a drum in focus, we can change some things down here. So if I wanted to go to the tom, I could select that that way as well, but back to the kick, this button right here will unload or load the instrument. If I unload the kick, now my kick is gone. 
So if you have drums or cymbals or percussion that you don't need, you want to unload them. Maybe this cowbell, just unload that. It's going to, of course, reduce the amount of memory that uh, it's taking up. To reload the instrument, same thing. Load the instrument there, select my kick, and load the instrument there. Okay, now up here on the snare, if I select the snare, we have A, B, and C. That's because in this case, we have three different snares to choose from, okay? I want B, select B. Sometimes you're just going to have A and B, all right, not A, B, and C, but we can play here. It's our new snare, and the C snare. Back to the A snare. Change the groove. All right, so just switch through your drums like that. And also I should mention that of course, our tempo matters here. We are tempo locked to whatever is in your DAW or up here in contact if you're running it in standalone. So if I put that on 90, I play in here or I play in Pro Tools, it's gonna be slower in this case. All right, then we have our overhead mix and our room mix. So this controls the volume level of the selected drum in the room or overhead mics. And that's just for each single drum. All right, so if we have our kick, for example, and I don't want much in the overhead or the room, I can still be sending a good amount of my snare to the overhead in the room, okay? And that does not affect the overall sound as you can see down here, our overhead and our room. Not getting anything from the kick. So that's just the send for each instrument, not the overall level of those microphones. Okay, we'll get to that again in a minute. So I'll control click here on Windows to set those to the center. So head in here and adjust the send amount for each of our different items here. All right, then we have tune. This is pretty obvious. Tune it down, it's lower. Tune it up, it's higher. And you can do that for each of your drums, all right? Then we have a standard attack, hold, and decay. And you probably won't need to mess with this at all unless you have a special case for where you need to. So, of course, if I pull the attack up, it's going to soften that attack, right? Kind of slides in that way. Just getting the tail end there of that kick. The snare. Pull the attack up. Again, you're not gonna really be messing with these most of the time. The hold on that, how long should it hold the uh, volume there? If I pull it down, kind of just goes off. Pull it up. You hear it sort of reverberate a bit in the room. So you'll really hear that on our toms, for example. Pull the hold down. Kind of cuts off. Again, you probably won't be messing with this too much, but if something is ringing out you know, at a certain volume too long, you can use the hold and the decay. So how fast is that gonna decay down, right? Back to the snare here. Pull the decay way up or way down. And in concert with the hold, now it just clicks off, right? So again, if something's ringing out too much, too long, you can control that here. Again, most of the time, you're not even gonna mess with this, but you can if you want. You can see there's a bit of uh, less decay on our kick here. We can do this. Pull the hold down a bit. Cut it off a bit faster. All right. So those are your attack, hold, and decay. Of course, we have different drums, percussions here, right there as well. Now moving down to our keyboard here. Let me just run through all of the drums uh, that we have in this kit here.
So we hover over a key here. We can see chopper low open down here in the gray area. See our articulations, our drums, what we're hitting here. So this is a ride choke here. So here's a crash two choke. Here's the crash one choke. I'll trigger it on my keyboard and then choke it out. Okay. So we do have chokes down here in this case for our symbols. Then up here, cowbell, you can see that's right open. All right, up here's our kick. Now this is kick dampened. We have side stick for a snare. Snare center left and right, so alternating samples from a left hit and a right hit. Okay. And we have a bunch of those left rights through here as well. So same thing for our toms here. Here's left, right. Hi-hat. Different articulations there. Symbols. Left, right there. Open. Edge. There's a flam. This is our kick open. All right, this is our kick dampened. Rim shots, rims. Now here we have different hits. So down in the bottom in that gray area, we can see our snare halfway L. So just the left hit. Right here, the right hit. So if you want to play things in, you know, with a couple keys, you can do that as well. Same stuff for our toms, left. This is the right hit. Now that's not panning, that's the hand we're hitting it with, essentially. Right. So you can play things in with your keyboard using alternating hits or using the same hit. Which is of course the nature of drums, you only have two hands, so sometimes you might have a right hand hitting a tom and a left hand hitting the uh, snare or something, okay? So pay attention to how everything is mapped down here. And that is our kit page. Now we'll move on to the grooves page. Choose our grooves tab. And most of this is self-explanatory. So we have different types, alternative rock, indie rock, new metal. And then we have folders inside of those folders for different types. So fast 105 BPM is the original BPM that was recorded with. Of course, because this is MIDI, we don't have to play things back at you know, 105. And then we have the actual grooves in here with our names. So here's an eighth with the hat that's closed. Here's an eighth with toms. And the names are pretty uh, self-explanatory. So here's a fill. To load something up here, double click it. So now we have our fill up here. It's our fill. Click another one. All right. Now this was, again, originally 105 BPM. So we can always change that if we want. 105 there. Toms. Okay. Maybe come down here to drowning. This was originally 92 BPM. This is a fourth. Here's eighth, for example. Play that. We can step through these here. So our hi hat open. So the ride. Okay, so all that's pretty, pretty simple to figure out. Again, we already know how to drag these out of contact here. Let me squeeze this down a bit. Just focus it up here and then drag it out. Also, you can access all of your MIDI files from the installation directory. So in this case, you know, whatever I wanted here. So any of these Abbey Roads that I wanted pop in here. Here's your MIDI files right in here, which of course you can just, you know, grab those and uh, drag them in as such as well. And that holds true for all of our drummers here. So it's the studio drummer folder, I could access that in my file system, so on and so forth. So now we'll come down here to tightness. So this is going to change the amount of groove in the beat. The center value is the original sounding played beat all the way to the right. The beat is completely quantized. As the knob is turned to the left, the beat gets more more loose until it sounds 
uh, very sloppy. Okay, so we can see this or hear this. Now it's much more machine-like. Right, looser, looser there. We also have our grid control, and this affects our tightness and swing as well. So different settings here will affect the kind of tightness. So an eighth, you know, 32nd, triplet there, 32nd, 16th, so on and so forth, okay? So if I put it on eighth triplet, made it really loose, sounds horrible, but really tight, okay? Same stuff for swing here. Now, if I play this. Stepping through our grid. But if we put swing on it in this case, pull it way up. That's an eighth swing. Sixteenth triplet swing. All right. So again, the swing allows for rhythmic shifting of the groove, okay? You probably wouldn't want it way up, but you can do that. Now, I wanna mention this, we're doing extreme values to show this here, because our settings in here also affect what we drag out. If we drag our MIDI from in here, it's going to affect what we drag out, okay? Versus pulling them in from our uh, folder. Same thing for whatever we set up here in the options for our MIDI mapping, which we'll get to next. So let me pull the swing down, put the grid on, we'll just say eighth. Tightness is centered out. I'll pull this groove out. Right, there it is. All right, sounds fine. Now tightness, let's pull it way down, the swing way up. Now we'll pull this out here. And as you can see, it's a little bit, a little bit different. So I'll play that. I can put tightness and swing down. Right, it's still playing back with those settings applied to that MIDI. Okay, so even whenever we center this out, so it should be playing like this. Right, that's actually in the MIDI. So these settings affect what you drag out. We can probably zoom in a bit and see some of those offsets, right? Especially like right in here, this note here, these are offset differently, we can see down here. So just be aware of that as well. All right, if you're dragging your MIDI out and all of a sudden it sounds horrible, right, if I pull it uh, something like that, move this up, drag it out, come in here, play back in our DAW, Then you come in here, default things out, play back the same groove. You think you have it here already, you play back again. It's like, wait, that's that's not what I hear in here. Well, it's because your settings were different when you pulled the MIDI out, all right? So as long as we're clear on that, which I think we are, move on to velocity. Same thing here, this will affect the MIDI we pull out, not just what you hear in uh, in your drummer series. So velocity changes the range of velocities in the groove, okay? At the center position, the original groove is unaffected. As the knob is turned to the right, the range is compressed to the high range. When it's turned to the left, it's compressed to the low range. But what the hell does that even mean, right? Let's, let's go in here and just choose something different. Why not, right? We'll go in here. Sounds fine, okay. Let's take the velocity way up. Hear that? It doesn't really sound that different. But if we pull it down, we're just getting really low velocities, right? So what happens if I center this out, and I'll pull this groove out, move this out of the way. So we just see this one. Now look at the velocities down here. Zoom in a bit here. So see, we have a bit of a range of velocities. They're, most of them are pretty high, but they're not all the way to the top. 
Now what if instead I took this all the way up? Well, in that case, I drag this out, put this right next to it. Now all of these velocities, let me move this, all of these velocities are pinned at, as you can see over there in the corner, 127. Where in here we have a bit of a range, right? Same thing if we were to take this all the way down and then we drag this out and look at this. All of those velocities are on like one. So we're barely hearing anything. So this control here actually affects the MIDI that you drag out. So you can see all of them right there. Original, all the way to the right, all the way to the left. Okay. So I play this back. We're still getting the velocities, even though our velocity is down in here. You know, it doesn't, uh, doesn't matter. Same thing here. I could pull it way up and then play this one. It doesn't matter, okay? So this affects what you pull out and what's playing within your drummer series. All right? Same thing for our half and our double time. This is, again, self-explanatory here. Squeeze this down a bit. Put this on half. Play in here. much slower, drag this out, you can see it's twice as large, twice as long as these here. It's the same groove, just of course stretched out, which is no problem because it's, again, it's, it's MIDI, it's not uh, loops. Times two, gonna be twice as fast. Same thing if I pull this out twice as fast. There you go, you see that there, okay? So this is the page that you would use your groove browser. If you want to use the grooves, that come with any of your drummer series and you want to affect things with tightness and swing and velocity and whatnot, you can preview those within here and then drag them out and build up your drum track that way if you don't want to just, you know, play things in. And we still have access to our mixer presets here. You can go through those while we're playing through as well. Okay, so that is our grooves page. Now let's check out our options page right down here. Again, still have access to our mixer and our focused groove. Velocity, let's start here. So a linear curve, an exponential curve. This is a plus, this is a minus, and this is a fix. And then we have velocity range. So this is going to be used mainly whenever you want to play things in on your keyboard. Right. Some keyboards have different uh, different setups where you have to press really hard. Or in that case, you might want to use a fix. So no matter how hard I press a key, hard or soft, it's going to be pinned to, in this case, 127. All right, but linear, of course, softer, linear fade up. Now, in contact, as you should know, this actual keyboard down here, the clickable keyboard, is velocity sensitive. So up here... It's a soft velocity. Down here is a hard velocity. All right, same key, different velocities. So you can see this better in here. That's our linear. That's probably what you're going to want to, to have it on. Of course, we can play with our range in here as well, which we'll get to uh, next. Then we have our exponential plus. So this means way up here is actually going to be a higher velocity than it was when it was on linear just because of the curve. That's easy to see, right? So again, if your keyboard, if you're having to press really hard on your keyboard, and you don't like that, you might want to choose exponential. Same thing here, except the opposite. So this way, I'm gonna to have to press really hard to build up that velocity, as you can see in here, to get way down here before we get those high velocities. And then fix, this is going to fix it to our maximum here in our range. So if you want everything to be 127, just choose fix and a 127 here. If I wanted everything, I'm just going to click and drag it here. 
want everything to be 67 now, no matter how hard I play, right? Everything's gonna be 67, all right? And of course you would use these here, uh, velocity curves in your range. If you're using a, a electronic drum kit or triggers on a real drum kit, uh, you might need to set this up for those as well. So onto range, let's come back to linear here. So I press a really soft velocity. I can go all the way down to basically one. But if I don't ever want to go that low, right? I never want to get that low of a velocity. Say I want something right there to be about the lowest sample I would want to trigger. I could pull this up. So now we'll only be going between 90 and 127. So even if I hit my key on my keyboard softly, it's going to be triggering 90. Okay. If I hit it harder, of course, we'll go up to 127. You can see that uh, in here. So even way up here, we're hitting 90 real, real quick. And then 127. Then down here, we have our MIDI mapping. We have presets, which we'll get to in just a second. But first, let's look at this note here. So D1 is our snare. I switch. I can get different articulations depending on what note I'm on just by clicking through here. And if I want to change something, so on. So this is my center left, right. If I wanted that to be a flam, I could change that here and accept it. Now that's a flam right here. Okay. Put that back on center left, right. We could also change the instrument for that note. Maybe I want the kick there instead. Accept it. Now it kicks right here. And we still have the one right there as well. Put this back on snare, left, right, accept that. Okay. And then we have select by MIDI. So now with that on, I can hit a key on my keyboard and it will change the instrument and the articulation that's in focus. So if I have something on my keyboard or on my drum pad that I want to trigger with that hit, turn on our select by MIDI, get that note, then change your instrument and select that change. Of course, change the articulation as well. And you can set up your own MIDI mappings here. And then of course, save that for easy, easy recall. Now let's look at the presets. So this ships with, with presets. All right. Default general MIDI, a couple for some drum brains, uh, superior drummer, BFD, so on and so forth. Now this comes into play for, say I'm using, it's on, let's put this on default to make sure it's on default. Now say I'm going to use something from BFD three. Now keep in mind, whatever software you're trying to use in conjunction or, or grooves MIDI that you're trying to use in conjunction with the drummer series, within whatever program you're using, whatever other program you're using, they often also have separate key maps that you can load up, which will of course affect their MIDI as well whenever you drag them out, right? So in BFD3, if I load a key map and say BFD3, load that up, and I come to my grooves here, here in BFD3, okay? So if I wanna drag this one out here, and just drag that out, of course. Now I dragged that out onto this track. If I play back, it doesn't sound right at all, okay? So I might try changing my preset in here for my map, see if that works. Not quite. Now BFD3 has a bunch of different articulations, okay, that aren't always mapped accordingly, so you might have to go in there and change your MIDI around. But another thing you could do, again, is load a key map. Maybe this time I'll load general MIDI here in BFD3. And I'll pull this same groove out here. So now we have it on this track here. I play that closer, but let's put this on general MIDI as well. Okay, much closer to this. And this works the other way around as well. 
So if I have this on maybe default, right, and I pull, let me choose something else here. Say so I pull this out with our default, but let me actually pull it down here onto the BFD3 track, which you can see right there. And pull BFD3 in here. And I play that. Not working, right? So instead, I might want to try maybe the BFD3 settings. And I pull that out here. And then when we're at it, let's grab a general MIDI version of that and pull that out in here. You can see, you know, some differences. Of course, it depends on the exact key map. Some of them are going to be the same. But if I switch it, say, here and pull this out, you can see. Same groove, all right, it's radically different, whereas these aren't really, aren't really that different. But this setting, of course, does affect what you pull out of your drummer series, okay? So again, in your other drum application that you're trying to use these grooves for, in this case, BFD3, but it could be superiors, could be slate, could be addictive drums, right? All of those, you might have to load up a different key map for them to work properly, so. The general MIDI one, load that. It should work with our general MIDI here. So much better right there. Okay. Kit view. We already know what that does. Don't need to go over it again. Now we have randomize here. We can turn this on. We can randomize the volume, the velocity changes up to you know, plus minus 64 in this case, the time, so random timing of notes, pitch of notes, and the tone of notes. And with all of these controls, you probably won't want to go much past about right there. You know, like a quarter of the way up, maybe a bit more here and there. But this is really just to add a bit of that sort of humanized feel to your grooves, right? You're not going to hear much here because they don't get super extreme, but I can pull the volume way up. Right? Some differences there. Velocity. How hard the notes are being hit. Just randomly. That's way too much, of course, but a little bit can help. Same thing for timing of notes. The pitch. You can hear that snare. And that's only plus or minus 100 cents. You can really hear it in the cymbals. Same thing for tone. Just random tone changes. All right. And that's a different EQ setting on each note. All right. So again, maybe a quarter of the way up. Mess around with those. Just a bit for more realism. And now let's head to the mixer page so we still have access to our mixer presets there for the entire mixer and you can see here if i choose something it changes everything in here all right eq our uh, transient master all of our effects all right again you can save your own presets for just the mixer if you want as well still have access to our grooves in focus so let's go through here, and this is where you would set things up, balance them out inside of our drummer series here. So we have different tabs for each drum. We can affect them differently with all of our different EQs, our transients, our uh, different compression tape, and so on. We also have effects presets down here. So if we're on kick, for example, something we could access, say, kick A, something like that, step through them here set up different things in here in our EQ, and of course save that if we want. Also get rid of it with that mark right there. Step through our other different effects here, see what changes that makes. Kick B, kick C, so on and so forth. Okay, of course for our snare, our hi-hat, our toms, here's the chop, the clap, okay. So this here is our close mics up here. This is our kit mics, over here is our buses, which we're gonna use our reverb 
four. Here's our master. So the master send right there as well, the width of that. But let's head over here for our close mics first. The obvious stuff would be stuff like pan, right? So pan my kick, pan my snare. All right. Control click, set those in the center there. Turn this down a little bit. Solo the kick, change this here. Solo that, set my levels for each thing. So the overall level of the mix, right in here. Okay, down here again, it's where we get into our EQ settings, our transient settings, all of our effects. We have this settings tab here. Let's click that. So here for our kick, we have an in mic and an out mic. Now, if you've never recorded drums before, you might wonder what an in mic is or an out mic. The in mic is the one you put inside the drum. So usually you'll cut a hole in the rear head of the kick drum and you'll place a mic inside. So you're getting more of that beater noise. And then the out mic is obviously outside. Sometimes you might have a sub mic as well for some of these different uh, kits, okay? The sub mic is of course for the really low end, okay? So if I solo just the kick, let's just play a groove here. We can adjust the balance of those mics in this case. So just that internal mic, the in mic. Adjust the balance of these, the out mic. Of course the out mic is going to be more boomy. Just balance that out here. Come to the snare. We have a top mic in this case. So that's the mic right on top of the snare. Pull this one down, pull this bottom mic up. Get those wires on the bottom really ringing out there. So you can balance this out. Of course, always remember we can switch up snares here if you want. Maybe go to the B snare. Then we have bleed. So when other things are triggered, like our kick, for example, that bleed is going to control, you know, is the sound of the kick or maybe the toms gonna bleed into that snare mic, which is often the case with uh, recording real drums. Of course, all of the mics on a real drum set are gonna have all kinds of bleed because that's just the nature of drums and the nature of, of microphones, but we can control that here with this bleed slider, okay? Hi-hat, we don't have these controls, toms, okay? Just our kick and our snare, all right? From there, we have effects routing. We can use these buttons here. So EQ first, then the comp, then the transient shaper, then the tape, or here, the transient, the comp, right? So on and so forth. You get the idea there on how you want that set up. Then we have the channel output. Now here we can click this to remove samples uh, from this channel for memory if you want. Then we have our master output. Right now it's just on master, which everything in here will be on master. I happen to have other outputs already set up. Okay, so this is where you would route individual drums out to then route into your DAW if you want to use your own plugins on these drums and, and sort of mix like you would a real recorded drum kit. But the important part is you have to have those those outputs set up first before you load up a modern drummer. Otherwise, you're gonna have to close down contact and reload things, okay? But in this case, go up here to outputs. You can see I already have some set up here, okay? So if I wanted to take my kick right here, just going out the master, I wanted to put that through a different output. I could choose this mono number two, for example. Back on master. Okay. But I want it right here. And then this is sort of Pro Tools specific because it's going to vary between DAWs, but it's basically the same thing. So here in Pro Tools, I would set up an audio track and select the proper input, which it's already set at. Monitor that track. Now down here you can see, getting the kick in that track. No snare in that track. Nothing else in that track but the kick. 
All right. Of course, I would do that for all of my drums, all the individual drums here. I could even do it to our overhead mics, room mics as well if I wanted to, and have all of that in my DAW and then mix like you would a real kit. Then we'll come down here to the EQ. This EQ is based on an SSL desk, the G. So basic EQ, we're on the, let's go to the kick tab here because we have different EQs for everything, even EQs for the overheads and the room, which you can set up differently. But once you know one, you'll know all of them. So the low end right now, it's a shelf filter. If I pull up an actual EQ plugin here, a sort of a shelf, right? Or we can change it to a bell like that. Same thing in here, change it to a bell and find the frequency we want to boost or remove. Okay. Then over here in our middle bands, we have a Q setting. So that Q setting would be like this here. Find the frequency and then adjust the Q narrow or wide. How many frequencies are we actually affecting? All right. That's a visual look at what that does. We can turn the EQ on or off. These lights, same thing for all of these other ones. And if I play back here, find the Hertz, then boost it or cut it. Okay. Change it to a bell shape. Same thing here. All right. Basic EQ stuff again here. How much are we going to boost? What frequency are we going to boost? And then the Q, how wide or tight. Okay. So if there's too much low end, I might find a low area, pull a bit out, clean it up a bit. Then if I want more snap to it, find a higher frequency here, pull some of that in maybe, just my Q. Then the top end is just like the low end. We don't have a Q setting, but again, find the frequency you want, then boost or cut it, change it to a bell if you want. And then we have an output for that as well, the overall output. All right. Then a transient master here, play back, boost the input of that. Of course, turn it on first. All right. Now we can attack this harder or pull the attack down on it a bit. All right. So it's not going to accentuate that attack. We can really accentuate it here. Okay. Same thing for the sustain. You can really hear that or pull it down. So if you want that sort of choppy kick drum sound, you can do that here with attack and sustain and then the overall output for that as well. So you can have different output settings for each of these here. Control click again, because I'm on windows and set those to the middle. Then a compressor again, based on the SSL desk basic stuff here. Let's head to the snare instead on the compressor. Threshold. So only levels that rise above the threshold will be reduced by compression. Okay. So we're reducing the overall dynamic range. Then we can make up for that up here. Here's the ratio of that the attack. You can always look down here in the gray area of contact. If you don't know what this stuff means. Okay. It's pretty self-explanatory. So you can do like parallel compression with this as well by setting it somewhere around here in the middle. Okay. So you can have a really compressed sound here and then just feed that some dry and then some wet. Right. Sounds bad now because we have that threshold down so far. Press it a bit. Let that attack ring out. It's really grabbing it there. Put the release up. You can hear that attack really come through now, and then it clamps down on it. If you want that to pump.
Okay. All right, so that's your compressor, basic stuff with a compressor to, again, reduce the overall dynamic range. Of course, if we reduce it a bunch and pull this up, we're going to get more of that lower noise in there that might be masked or covered up by other things. Of course, we can do that to all of these different items here. Okay. On to the tape. Let's go back to the kick here. Put that on solo. The gain. Get it really saturated. Pull up the output. Warmth here controls that low end. Get really warm. And then our high frequency roll off. Same thing for the toms. Of course, I might want to come in here to our grooves and find something with toms on it. Back over here. Here's a tom, select that, turn the tape on. Warmer there. And then the high frequency roll off. A little bit of warmth goes a long way, a little bit of that sort of distortion can sort of pull, you know, pull things uh, together. Of course, we have our output for each of those as already mentioned. Okay. Same stuff for our overhead mics over here. We can EQ those transients on those, all that stuff. Use presets down here as well. Okay. So that's all of our effects. Let's go back here now. Turn this off of solo. Let's just change this to alternative. So then we have our overheads, which the overheads are going to be the microphones in the room. This is the stereo channel, the mono channel, the room stereo channel, and then the room mono channel there. And again, you probably remember that we can send individual levels of each drum to this overall mix over here. Okay, so if you have too much snare in your overheads, and it's masking your, you know, your cymbals or something, or you have too much uh, of your kick, right? Not going to sound great. All right, you can really hear those coming through our overheads in our room. We have the direct channels muted here. Right? So if I wanted more of a modern rock or metal sound, I'd definitely come in here and especially the kick and the snare, pull those down some so they're not in that overhead or room nearly as much. And focus those more for our symbols and the room more for giving it a space, making everything sort of feel uh, like it's playing together, you know, as one instrument instead of, uh, you know, individual things, right? So now you play much better. Not nearly as much coming through these channels now. So here for our overhead stereo channel, we have the width, we can pull it all the way down to mono or out here to stereo. We also have sin controls, which we'll get to in a minute on the mono channel for the overheads. Way too much kick coming through there. Pull some of that down, right? Same for this, I pull some out. Then your room. So again, with control, mono or stereo. Here's our other room, which is the mono signal. Pan that if you want to. Same thing for our mono overhead here. We can do the same thing with the panning there. Then we have our sin control up here. Of course, adjust the overall level of that as well. Take this off here. I could pull these way down if I wanted. Have a really focused drum sound that way. We'll pull it in. 
you get too much, it's going to be too messy. So now these are way too loud. Pull them out. Just a bit. All right. So that's how all of that works. Now we have the buses here. We'll get to these sin controls. So buses right here. We have a reverb and then the master. Go to the reverb tab. We can choose a bunch of different reverbs in here. Right here, we have the main type. So halls, then subtypes in here. So if we go to chambers, just to really hear it, go to a, this mid-rich one. We'll play. We hear stuff coming through. Now, how is it coming through? Well, through our sins up here. If I pull all this down, I won't be sending any of that signal to the reverb. So you can send at different levels of your snare. We really want a reverb you know, on that snare. Do a huge amount of that. Just the overall level of the reverb here. So this way we can avoid, say, putting a lot of reverb on our kick, right? Which isn't going to sound good in most cases. Right? So you might want a nice tight kick drum with more reverb on your snare, maybe some on your toms. It just depends on how much you want. But you can dial in those levels right up here. All right. Then we change the groove again. Down to something else here. Now here on our master, we also have a send. So here we can send everything from the master to the reverb as well. So if you want a certain amount of reverb on everything, you can do that right here. That's getting everything, right? So. Toms. Even if I pull the send from the direct channel. Because it's coming from our master, we're going to have the same space for everything. So use this control carefully because you probably aren't going to want, you know, plus 6 dB reverb on everything. But you can do that for effects if you want. Okay, then we have the overall width of our master. So we can pull that down to mono. Now everything is coming right down the middle. Or the stereo there. Then we have a left right switch. And this changes the position of the listener, right? So right now we have it. So we're sort of behind the kit and we're playing the drums, okay? So we have certain symbols on the right, certain symbols on the left, toms from the right to the left, right, as we can see up here with how they're panned, right? So tom one is panned way to the left, all the way up to tom four, panned way to the right. Okay, if I switch that around, now it's going to be like we're on the other side of the kit. And this is often how a lot of records uh, are are mixed. Not all of them, but a lot of them are. If you've ever played drums, you've probably uh, noticed that whenever you hear your hi-hat on the left or you hear it on the right, you're like, okay, well, I know how they're mixing this here from the listener's point of view or from the uh, point of view of the uh, player. So again, we can switch that. 
you'll see all of these pan knobs change as well. There we go. All right. Grooves. Let's find some toms here. All right. That's like the player point of view here. Switch it around. Other side. Okay. And of course, the overall level of that uh, master there as well. Remember, you have effects that you can put on everything. So even on the master tab, we could adjust the tape. Okay. So just remember you can EQ, use your transient master, your tape, all that stuff on all of these different tabs. All right. Of course, for the master, the compression will be more noticeable because it's pulling and sort of gluing everything together. Turn it off. Sounds okay, but turn it on. Everything is glued together. So if I wanted to, I could do a lot of compression, make up a lot with a very high ratio. Right? Doesn't sound great, but with parallel compression, I could dial in that really hard hitting sound with that dry. Right. Make it punch through a little bit more. And of course, do all of your other mixing work in here as well. Or, as we've already discussed, head in here to your settings for each of your different drums, right? And set your master output to something else. And then record all of that in your DAW then mix with whatever plugins that you like. So that is how to use the drummer series here for Native Instruments Contact. You will now be familiar with all of these. And just to prove the point really quick, I'll grab something from say Studio Drummer here, load it up, you can see everything is instantly uh, familiar here, right? Options here, same stuff in here. Grooves, same stuff in here. Of course, different grooves, obviously. Uh, mixer. Same stuff in here, right? Come through here, EQ, all of this stuff, settings, all of this stuff, your output, right? Overhead stereo in this case, room in this case, and then overhead uh, mono in this case. We don't have the don't have the room mono, but we can of course adjust that with that knob there. Same thing here for our buses and whatnot. Okay. Of course, remember, because a lot of people miss this, on your kit view, trigger on mouse click and show those states. All right, I can't tell you how many times people have said, how do I get to make noise whenever I click a drum and also see what's being triggered? Again, right here in options, make sure both of those are checked. Now in this case, we just have one different snare. Switch that over. New samples loaded up here. Again, we have snapshots that we can load up. Save your own, of course. All right. Kick damped there. There's a kick open. So no damping on it. All right. Hover over these keys to see what everything is. Of course, you can map things however you want as well. So we already know all that, right? What about 60s drummer? You think this is the same thing? Well, it is, isn't it? Okay, same stuff, man. Once you learn one, you know, you know all of them. 
put psychedelic rock on there. Have two different choices of snares here. All the same stuff in here. Select by MIDI. Classic sound there. Of the 60s. All the same stuff that we've already seen in here. Of course, sometimes don't have as many channels, but everything else is the same. Let's pull this down here. Even 80s drummer. Pull that in. There we go. Again, number one thing to do, head here to options, turn both of those on. There we go. And the snare here, have three different choices in this case. Go to the next one. Go to the B. Same stuff in here. Here we have a compression channel here. Really compressed stereo channel in this case. Get that 80s, that 80s sound. Is here, reverb, all the same stuff in here. Okay. Options, kit, all this stuff is the, the same. Obviously, the sounds are different, the drums are different, but the operation is the same thing, you know. One more, because this is the same as well, but just to hear a bit of a different sort of a sound coming here to our options. Turn both of those on. Makes things much easier for us. So this is some old style drums here. Same stuff in here, right? This one we have a shell. Shell, there's a triangle. Right there. All right. The kit view over here. That's that kick shell right there. Again, same stuff in here. We can choose which drum is in focus. Select by MIDI and all of that same stuff we grab the sparkle kit we look at the white kit earlier same drums same options in there same stuff in here of course but the sound is going to be uh, different options boom boom again three different snares in here go to b Then of course, build up your sequence. If you want to use this MIDI in here. All 
All right, and go ahead and compose your epic drum track. And what you'd probably want to do is, again, as we looked at, is split those out and mix with your own plugins. Although you don't have to, because in contact, another thing you could do if, if you don't know, if you're on the outputs, click this here. You actually have inserts within contact here. So you could even mix, you know, sort of almost pre-mix a little bit more here uh, before you split things out if you wanted to. Not a ton of effects, but some things that you could mix a little bit more if you want. Filters, EQs, effects, right? But most of us would probably want to mix with our own, you know, our own plugins. You can buy these packs separately or you can get them all included with various versions of complete. Just check exactly what's included with each version of complete. There's complete, there's complete ultimate, and then there's the new complete ultimate collector's edition. And that should have all of these. Complete ultimate should have all these as well. So that is the definitive guide on Native Instruments Drummer Series for Contact.